Now, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, that's a space serial that's full of fabulous digital sound effects. <laughs> The greatest story in the universe. Kremen of the Star Corps. On this wonderful LP, folks, you'll hear the following fabulous stars. Oliver Sutton, Lord Elpus, Anne Doverfist, Charlie Sangels, Bernie Housedown, Geriatric, Rhoda Boat, Sir Aeos Litho, folks, Matt O'Horn, Gordon Heaven, and Claude Your Eyes Out. Here's Kremen. <laughs> Thank you, friends. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, kids, here we are with a fab new adventure. Yeah, he's right, folks. Hey, Captain. What is it? Do I get any big parts in the show? Carly, your parts are too big already. Hey, folks, before we go any further, let me show you around my latest research and development lab down here through this door. <laughs> Captain, what are you thinking about? Me, of course. Ah, here we are. Oh, hi, Dr. Gitfinger. Ah, hello, Captain. It's really great to see you. Still falling down on your R's, I hear. Yeah, that is right. Hey, Captain, hmm? what's this over here? Oh, that. That's an invention I'm particularly proud of, Carla. I invented it in one of my quiet moments between saving a distant planet from the grasp of an evil alien and freeing a race of oppressed 15-footed midgets from a giant Veruca. As you know, folks, I'm never very far away from a fabulous new adventure. And it starts right here, at this door sound effect. Captain, hmm? I have just run all the way from the launch pad. Uh -huh. And the lads down there say that your rocket ship is ready for takeoff. Oh, good. Have they filled her up? Oh, yes, but they only had two star. Oh, you idiot, Gitfinger. You know what happens when you fill a rocket ship with two star? No, you don't get the free glasses. We shot over to the rocket bay. Golly gee, you know, Carla, it's been so long since I used this ship. Hmm, I know. It's such an old model, the X-104. I mean, look at this! A stained glass porthole! That's nothing! You know this ship's got an outside loo, don't you? We made ready for takeoff. I've polished all the portholes, and I think we're ready for takeoff now. You know, you look terrific. Oh, thank you, Captain. <laughs> Tell me something. Are you inside that dress trying to get out, or outside trying to get in? Here we go again, Doc. I wonder what's out there. Oh, it's probably the same old assortment of planets and asteroids. Hey, Carla, look on the scanner. It's Uranus. Captain, you're so bold. Captain, I've just received this communique from planet Earth. It says, don't forget, when you reach Vector 9, to map a course 678.9% to the left. And when you reach Vector 10, turn 6 megahertz right and execute a 300 degree turn whilst plotting a 5 million liter double overhead underhang. Phew, Doc. That's a lot to remember. Yeah. And I thought this was going to be an easy trip. You know, Carla, hmm? I find my duties so exhausting. Last night I couldn't stay awake for a second. Hmm. You couldn't even stay awake for a first. Later on that day, Carla and I were in the ship's mess, swapping space jokes over a plate of nuclear fish and chips and galactic goulash, when suddenly the alarm went... Quick, everybody! Up to the bridge! Once on the bridge, I raced to the controls. Hey, Carla, look! What? Here on the scanner! It's a horrible thing! That's not the scanner, Captain. It's a mirror. Oh. Have you ever noticed how mirrors steam up when you kiss them? Suddenly, there was a sinister rumbling. I cursed the galactic goulash. It cursed me back. Suddenly, I realized it wasn't me. That last revolting reverberation had come from outside the ship. I think we better go and investigate, Captain. I think you're right. We donned our spacesuits and went into the airlock. Oh, by the way, Carla, how's your family back home? Oh, I meant to tell you. You remember my sister, the one with the big feet? Uh-huh. She got a job in Canada stamping out forest fires. Oh, terrific. We passed through the airlock, pausing only for a quick sauna. When we were outside the ship, suddenly there it was. A huge object 
pulsating and dripping and green with with tentacles and hairy lumpy bits. Oh, Captain, it's just too horrible. It certainly is. And it takes a certain kind of courage to go near a thing like that, Carla. A kind of courage over and above what any man could reasonably be called upon to summon from the very heart of his being. But, but you have that courage, Captain. No. We sped back into the airlock, pausing only to buy a paper from Joe on the corner. The headlines screamed at me. <coughs> I decided the best thing to do was to zip back to Earth and tell the President. Let's go back to Earth and tell the President, Carla. Okay. Oh, by the way, Captain. Hmm? Why do all the guys in the crew call me Martini? Simple, Carla. Anytime, any place, anywhere. Hello, Captain. Have you any orders for me? Yes, Doc. Back to Earth. Right. The ship neatly executed a reverse thrust, and seconds later, we were back on Earth. We entered the President's plush oval office and told him the horrible news about the blob. He keeled over. Arg! My God, he's fainted. Yeah. Give him artificial respiration. Now, wait a minute. This is serious. Give him the real thing. It was then I realized something wasn't quite right. How come the president's eyeballs were both on the same side of his nose? Why had his legs just walked out of the room? Is it true what they say about Dixie? Does your chewing gum lose its flavor on the bedpost overnight? I mentioned the magic word, nymphomania, and suddenly the president recovered. I just can't believe it, Kremen. I know, but it's true, sir. Yeah, it's as true as I'm both standing here. Okay, I'll call in my secretary of state. Now, what was his name? It used to be Henry Kissinger. Now, is it Jaime Schwartz or Philly Buster or... I don't know. Um... I wonder who's Kissinger now. <laughs> Damn it, Kremen, this is no time for songs. Yeah, Captain, we gotta do something big quick. Wait a minute. What? Let's do what we always do in the movies, when faced with an alien monster. What's that? Let's blast it to bits. But do we have anything big and powerful enough? It was at that moment that the president let me into a state secret. Our scientists are working on a totally new device, Carmen. Really? It's a nuclear-powered, self-launching, photon-assisted, digital, intercontinental ballistic missile that seeks out its target even in the dead of night with its own computerized radar unit. Gee, that sounds great. There's only one snag. What's that? This morning, the elastic broke. <laughs> However, I do have a reserve plan. I call it B. I call it B because it's a real stinger. Oh, my God. Well, what's your plan, Chief? I can't tell you now, Kremen. Walls have ears. Well, I guess it makes a change from Regency Stripes. <laughs> listen, Kremen, and listen good. What? Meet me in Tibet in seven minutes. Uh-huh. Disguise yourself as a llama. I'll come as a camel. What will this achieve? Well... Could be a lot of fun. Oh, excuse me, Kremen. Sure, sir. Hello? Gee, oh, what? what's that? I hope this all Do turns it, out all right. Oh, of course it will, my little bean sprout. I don't know. I'm kind of worried. Carla? What? Let's get something straight between us. What, here? Having secured a promise of any military assistance we might need from the president, we bade him farewell. Well, good luck, Kremen. Oh, thank you, sir. Oh, by the way, uh, a little question before you go. Yes, what's that? Well... How come you always manage to look so healthy and tan? Oh, in between assignments, sir, I leave town and relax at my club. Really? Yes, I'm a country member. Okay, I'll remember. <laughs> I drove Carla to my penthouse pad for a little nookie before we took off to face the thing. Want a little drinky-poo, Carla? Let me ask you a question first. Is this mission gonna be dangerous? It'll probably be the most dangerous mission we've ever faced. Okay, I'll have a triple brandy, three mandrax, two shots of whiskey, and a magadan. It was a long flight out into space to where the blob was, so I put Carla to bed. Well, good night, my little petal pie. Good night, Captain. <laughs> oh, by the way, wake me as soon as we get to the blob. Good night. As I walked back to the bridge to see Doc, I couldn't help thinking what a brick Carla had been, sticking with me through all the dangerous adventures. I remember she gave up a nice, safe, secure job to come with me. She used to make men's trousers. Mind you, she still likes to keep her hand in. I walked over to our new computer and pushed a few buttons. Hi, computer. Hi, Captain. This is the first time I've used you, isn't it? Yes, Captain. Huh. I am the Yamasaki 4 stroke 509. Oh, hi, Captain. Hi. I couldn't sleep. What you doing? I'm just chatting to the new computer. Oh, 
Oh, hi, computer. Hi, Carla. You know, this computer is so advanced, so clever and fantastic, it'll do half our work. Oh, well, why didn't you get two? Captain. What? We are coming within range of the blob, <gasps> which has grown to twice its normal size <gasps> and is looking at us with a hungry expression. Oh, my God. There's only one thing to do, Captain. What's that? Pray. I'm no good at praying. I got two left knees. I summoned my chief engineer to the bridge to look at it through the porthole. Well, Thrinman, what do you think of that? Uh, well, I'll be a f- It's so f- And those sticky brown entrails look just like f- His language was so disgusting. I'd never used language like that in my whole mouth. Doc, what do you think we should do? I don't know, Captain. There's no precedent for this situation. <laughs> The ship lurched as the blob let out a long, low, disgusting moan. Hello, bridge to Armory. Armory here. Who am I speaking to? Uh, Tyrone. Tyrone who? Tyrone shoelaces. Oh, hi, Ty. Hi. Are all the bombs primed? Sure thing. Great. Stand by to fire. Well, Captain, the moment of truth has at last arrived. She's right, Captain. The moment that separates the men... From those other ones. Are you sure you can manage, Captain? Carla, I may only have the heart and lungs of a 40-year-old man, but I have the liver and onions of a transport calf. What's up, computer? Emergency, emergency. What kind? Captain. Yeah? A blob has just thrown a tractor beam around the ship. Captain. What? I've been thinking. Well, it had to happen sooner or later. Captain, I, I think the blob wants to eat us. She might be right, Captain. It has begun to drag us towards itself. Uh-oh. Get finger. Yes, Captain? Fire the retro rockets. Okay. You got a match? It was far too late anyway. The force beam in which we were trapped in was far too strong. A terminal look of horror hit the crew. Was this the end? Could this be the dreaded moment when Alan Freeman says what will happen next tune in tomorrow at the same time and find out suddenly it was tomorrow well captain this looks like the end sure does carla she threw her arms around me looked deep into my eyes and said captain say i'm lovely okay i'm lovely We left our battered ship and went out onto the surface. Oh, it's all wet and sticky out here. I should never have worn these high heels. Hmm, I should have left mine behind, too. We tromped onward. Ever onward, we tromped, searching for some clue as to what this strange object was. Hours later... Oh, gee, I'm so tired. Me too. Uh, hey, Doc, yeah. did you bring lunch? Yes, I I brought some dehydrated rump steak with rice, followed by raspberries, raisins, and rhubarb. Terrific. Just put the steak down there, and I'll heat it up with my ray gun. Oh, no. It's busted. What we need is a handyman. Uh, who is it? Hi there. Who are you? I'm Harry the Handyman. Great! Can you fix the motors on the rocket ship? No. Can you fix the steering gear? No. Can you fix this ray gun? No. Well, what makes you think you're so handy? Well, I only live around the corner. <laughs> Before we could point out to him that he was in the wrong sketch, an unearthly rumbling sound was heard. <laughs> I'm afraid it was me, Captain. I'm so hungry. Well, eat some of this earth. You're kidding. I wouldn't eat that earth if it was the last earth on earth. As Carla was chatting, I noticed that right behind her in the slime, a trap door was opening. <laughs> through a trap door we entered. We wandered through the grimy caverns. Uh, can, we, uh, can we have some grimy music, please? Thank you. Through the grimy cavern we wandered. Caverns filled with the sound of dripping cave sound effects records. You know, Carla, there's something funny going on. Well, after 20 episodes, it's about time. Hey, Doc. Yes, Captain? Hold my helmet and ray gun. I'm going to the loo. All right, you what? You're going to the loo at a time like this? Uh-huh. Suppose we all went to the loo. Then where would we be? In the loo, I guess. Suddenly, at the other end of the cavern, I heard a mysterious sound. <laughs> Carla, did you hear that? Hear what? Uh, could you do that mysterious sound again, please? 
<gasps> oh, Captain, I'm frightened. Don't be, Carla. I'm going on ahead to investigate. I strode boldly alone, my footsteps echoing in the eerie darkness. Onward I strode, until I saw a figure standing before me. I struck a match. <gasps> Good grief! He had Cod's eyes, a walrus mustache, and was wearing a herringbone suit. I couldn't help thinking he'd make somebody a wonderful aquarium. Why? Hello, Captain. Well, if it isn't my old arch enemy, Gort, King of Thargoidia. Yes, and welcome to my ship. You mean this blob isn't really a blob? No, it was a neat disguise to tempt you into my trap. What? Guards! Take them to the cells! <laughs> Doc and I were manhandled by the guards and thrown into a steel chamber. <laughs> Doc, where have they taken Carla? I don't know. The beast fiends! You'll never get away with this! Minutes later, Carla was thrown into our cell. Oh, 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 Captain! Carla, what happened? I've been graped. Don't you mean raped? No, there was a whole bunch of them. <laughs> Several days later... Oh, good Captain. I can't stand it any longer. I'd rather starve to death than exist on prison food. Nothing to eat but bread and water. Just look at the state of this filthy water. That's the bread. Never mind, Carla. I managed to bring with me a bottle of my very own special homemade wine. Oh! The guard didn't find it when he searched me. Homemade wine? Is it good? Sure. I made it with my own two feet. Oh! Now, tell me, Carla. What's that, Captain? Tell me about those guards who had their way with you. Oh, it was awful. They gave me the willies. <laughs> I got up to have words with the guard. Hey, guard! Come here! Yes, what do you want? Tell me... Are you new around here? Well, newish. That's funny. You don't look newish. He was an ugly brute with three cauliflower ears and a broken nose. I knew it was broken because it was running with a limp. Captain, we've just got to escape soon. We've gone without food for a week. She's right, Captain. I've had a belly full of starvation. Yeah, and I'm getting fed up with hunger, too. <laughs> well, it looks like we've run out of hunger jokes. Yeah, if only we had a decent script to get our teeth into. <laughs> Doc and I went into a huddle to formulate an exciting escape bid. Carla was right. We couldn't stand much more of this deprivation. Carla? Yes, Captain? Your glass is empty. Do you want another one? What am I going to do with two empty glasses? Doc! <laughs> yes, Captain! I'm right here! I have an escape plan. If it works, we'll be out of here in no time. And if it fails? Well, if it fails, Gort will take great delight in tearing us limb from limb. Oh, is he that nasty? Nasty? He's so cruel, he sprinkles itching powder on fleas. Okay, here's the plan. I... <laughs> Okay, got it? All yeah, right. got it. Okay, Carla, here's what I want you to do. Yeah, what? Attract the guard's attention. Uh-huh. And then say to him, Hey there, want me to do my mind-reading act? And then hypnotize him? Exactly. But you must realize, Carla, this is a very dangerous assignment. Will you do it for me? Oh, Captain, after all these years of us being together, I'd do anything for you. Oh, Carla. I took her unto me and gave her one of my Oscar-winning kisses. Carla. Yeah? I love you. I know it sticks out a mile. At that moment, the huge steel door opened, and in walked the ugly brute. Here are your food rations for today. He threw a lump of bread on the floor. Hey, guard. Yes, sir, French. You want me to read your mind? Impossible. No, really. I used to work in a circus. All you gotta do is look deeply into my eyes. What, like this? Yeah, deeply, deeply. Like you're feeling sleepy and wonderful and sleepy and lovely. Suddenly, the most amazing transformation took place. His eyes swam. His brain turned to jelly. Suddenly, his IQ was reduced to the level of a Radio 1 disc jockey. He fell to the floor in a stupor. 
Are you all right, Carla? Oh, yeah. Mind reading's a speciality of mine. Still, it's a shame he wasn't Irish. Why? I'd have only charged him half price. <laughs> we decided to investigate the ship. We left the basement where the cell was and headed towards Gort's headquarters. Hey, Doc. Yes, Marine Captain. You haven't got any great new inventions, have you? Something that might help us overpower Gort. I'm afraid not, Captain. The last thing I invented was a birth pill for men. Oh, really? Yeah. Don't you know that out of all the 500 men we tested it on, mm -hmm. not one became pregnant? Suddenly, we were outside Gort's chamber. We burst in. Ah, Kremen, I see you've escaped at last. I realized I was face to face with the most evil man in the universe. Gort was so evil, he once forced Dolly Parton to play the accordion. You know, Kremen, I wasn't always the most evil man in the universe. No? I had to start at the bottom. You mean the BBC? Oh, no, not as low as that. Kremen? Yes? In a few moments, we'll be taking off for Thargoidia. Oh. Hear that rumbling? Yeah, but I didn't want to say anything. Those are the nuclear engines, you fool. Oh. Hey, Doc. Yes, Captain? How long is it going to take to get to Thargoidia? Well, let me see. E equals MC squared, right? Plus the square root of 95.8 stereo VHF takes away the number you first thought of, I'd say. Taking into account adverse trajectory oh. patterns... My the... God, we'll probably have arrived before you work this out. Suddenly, I noticed an evil glint in one of Gordon's seven eyes. What are your plans, oh evil one? My mission this time, Kremen, is to start an intergalactic war to end all intergalactic wars. It'll be planet against planet, world against world, star against star. No one will survive. But what if it rains? Then it'll be held indoors. <laughs> it's too late to cancel now anyway. Tickets were sold out weeks ago. Gort turned to his computer and set the coordinates for the journey to Thargoidia. Oh, Captain. What? He really means to go ahead with this madness. I know. He's so cruel, he'd think nothing of kicking a Martian in the Chronicles. Well, Kremlin and Crow, better say your prayers. Why? Because to make sure you don't foil my plans, tomorrow you all go to the execution chamber. Oh, Drataroo. An execution is just what I don't need right now. What do you mean? Well, I just had my hair set. Oh, what time does it go off? <laughs> and so, Captain, until your execution, you are my guest on this ship. You can't escape, so you're free to roam around. He flicked a switch with one of his spiky green fingers, and the ship went into Mega Drive. Tell me, Gort, if your plan is to destroy the whole universe, what's the point in that? So I can claim on the insurance. Oh, I see. Later on in our quarters. Well, Carla, tomorrow we die. Oh, Captain. Huh? I was just thinking of the first time we ever met. An unforgettable occasion, huh? I'm so glad you remember it, too. Remember what? The first time we met. Oh, yeah. It was so romantic. You put your hand on my knee. Mm. Can you remember what I said? Heavens above. And it was. <laughs> Over in a corner, Doc was fiddling with his pocket-sized computer. <laughs> Well, Doc, did your computer come up with an answer to our problem? No, but it filled up 20 seconds of the episode. Dear listeners, he may seem thick to you, but since he invented the rearview mirror, he's never looked back. <laughs> the ship sped on towards Thargoidia. Suddenly, I had an urge. I went up to one of Gort's guards. Uh, excuse me, could you point me towards the loo? What? That's the 15th time this episode. I know. I'm suffering from Darth Vader's revenge. <laughs> well, may the force be with you. <laughs> then, over the ship's speakers came the announcement. Due to a shortcut, we will be landing on Thargoidia in two hours. Tell me, Gort, why did we take a shortcut to Thargoidia? Because we're traveling in a Hertz renter ship, and we've only hired it for the week. We watched the screen as Thargoidia came into view. 
It was an unusual sort of planet. Golly, Captain, look! Yeah! The only square planet in the universe! I know. It was hand-built by robots, you know, after the original round planet blew up many years ago. Gosh, how did that happen? Well, one day, a ship heavily laden with nuclear waste was just taking off. Someone on the bridge accidentally opened a porthole and blew the pilot out. The ship plunged back to the ground and... Well, Kremen, we'll be landing any minute now, and soon it'll be time for your execution. What would you like for your last meal? Well, I'd like Brussels sprouts, and I'd like to eat them in Brussels. Hey, Carla, that's a good idea. Uh, I'd like Kentucky Fried Chicken, please. Uh, excuse me, Gordon, but how do you intend to kill us all? It's quite simple, Doctor. I'll put headphones on each of you, and then play a different Nolan Sisters record in each ear until your brains explode. <laughs> well, there it was, out the porthole, through the clouds, the place we were about to die on. Thargoidia. The universe's strangest planet. It's so strange, Captain. I know. Mind you, before I met you, I used to hang out in some strange places. Really? Hmm, but I've had the holes in my spacesuit repaired since then. Suddenly, before you could say Tarmatawakatangi, Gort's mighty ship was landing on Thargoidia. It plunged through a thick cloud layer and hurtled its majestic way towards Gortadia, the capital city of Thargoidia. Hey, Gort, what is it, Earth scum? Why don't I toss a coin, and if I win, we go free. Mm -hmm. But if you win, you can do whatever you want with us. What is this Earth expression, toss a coin? I can't make head nor tails of it. <laughs> no, Kremen, you and your friends will suffer as you've never suffered before. With jokes like that last one, don't you think we've suffered enough? Hey, Captain, look, through the porthole. What? We're approaching the landing pad. She was right. In the distance, Gortadia gleamed in the green evening sky, its crystal spheres and glass towers looking like something out of an old Star Trek repeat, 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 repeat. repeat well, repeat, Captain, repeat. welcome to Thargoidia. The tidiest planet in the universe. Tidy? Yes, it's so tidy here that yesterday they arrested a dog for dropping litter. <laughs> Speaking of litter, has anyone seen my script? That was Dr. Heinrich von Gitfinger, the genius who actually discovered a cure for wheat germ. Ah, yes. A beautiful landing, if I do say so myself. Well, you three, follow me. And no tricks, because I'll be right behind you. Okay, Carla, it's time to say your prayers. I can't. I'm an atheist. Are you really? Yeah, but it's not my fault. It's just the way God made me. In the cell, we immediately decided to conjugal. Oh, Captain. Carla. Oh, oh. oh I love Carla and I made mad, passionate love. You know, some women smoke a cigarette before making love, and some women smoke after making love. Carla was the only woman I knew who smoked during. Ow, ow! Oh, sorry, Captain. For Pete's sake, be careful with that cigar. Well, Captain. What? Are we going to go into another romantic bit here? I guess so. Okay, I'll go put some romantic bit music on. Oh, fine. You know, Carla, I'm sorry to have dragged you into all this mess, my little cosmic cupid. I blame myself. Oh, no, Captain, don't. It's not your fault. It's the scriptwriter. But I always seem to drag you into impossible scrapes. Oh, I... Captain, oh. I'm no stranger to tragedy. No? Worse things than this have happened to me. Really? Yeah. Remember... Remember when my first husband died? Oh, no, I didn't know he was dead. Yeah. It was just before a meal. He went out into the garden to get a cabbage and just dropped dead. Oh, no. Yeah. It was terrible. What did you do? I had to open a tin of peas. <laughs> Meanwhile, upstairs in Gort's palace, plans were being drawn up for the destruction of the universe, just so Gort could collect on the insurance. <laughs> and when our first wing of mega bombers start the destruction, I want you to pay special attention to planet Earth. Which one is that, Your Majesty? It's the one that looks just like a satellite weather piece. <laughs> Back in the cell... You know, Captain... What? These cell bars are extremely tough. I know, I've tried them. It's a shame James Garner isn't here. Why James Garner? Well, he'd cut through the bars with one of his Rockford files. <laughs> Meanwhile, over in the corner of the cell, 
Carla was dusting her doobry, ready for the execution. Now, don't worry, my space nymph. I'll get us out of this somehow. You will? Well, of course. Courage and daring run right through my family tree. My great-grandfather, at the age of 79, streaked naked through the Chelsea Flower Show. Did he get arrested? No, he won first prize for the best dried arrangement. Captain. <laughs> yes, what is it? You can obviously take the terrific strain of this sort of damocles that's hanging over our heads, but I'm kind of worried about the dock. She was right. Another day in a cell would drive him crazy. You know, Carla, the last time he was in jail, it, it affected his mind so much. He thought he was a spoon. You mean he went stir-crazy? <laughs> Suddenly, in swept Gort. Well, Clermont, your time has come. It looks like you're for the chop. The chop? But I ordered the mushroom omelette. <laughs> Carla ordered the chop. Well, I must say, this is a pretty kettle of fish. No, Dr. Gitfinger ordered the kettle of fish. <laughs> Later that day, a whole bunch of guards came to collect us. Where are you taking? Taking us, you ugly brutes! To the execution chamber! Moments later, we were thrown into a room full of evil instruments of torture. <laughs> it was Gort with Droog, his head executioner, standing there in black leather mask, black leather coat, gloves, trousers, and high heels. Hey, Captain. <laughs> what is it? Why don't you... Yeah. Uh -huh. Hey, good idea. Uh, listen, Gort, if you let us out of this, I'll give you full film rights to this series, plus 15% of all T-shirt sales in the UK. You will never bribe your way out of here, Kremen. And don't try these low tricks on my men. They're all hand-picked. Yeah, and so are their noses. <laughs> Droog dragged us over to the brain atomizer and strapped us all in. What do you think they're going to do with us, Captain? As I watched, the creature dragged a huge laser gun into position. He clamped one end over our brains and plugged the other into the mains. I guess he's going to switch that machine on, bore holes in our heads, and melt our brains. But don't worry, I have a plan. You got a plan? Yep. Oh, goody. I knew we could rely on you, Captain. She cocked an eye at me. I cocked an eye at her. And there we lay. Cockeyed. Captain, what'll we do? Quick! Act nonchalantly, Carla, and whatever you do, don't look at my feet. What Gort and Droog couldn't see was my bionic toe unscrewing and a slim silver probe coming out of the hole. The probe slowly reached over and snipped through the mains cable. <laughs> the room was plunged into darkness. In the confusion, I breathed in... Snapped the straps, undid the others, lit a fag, read the paper, killed guards, and we all made off in one of the quickest escapes in radio history. Hey, Captain. What? Where are we? We're in an air duct. They'll never find us here. I wonder what Gort was thinking when the lights went out. He probably took a dim view of it. <laughs> Seriously, Captain, what are we gonna do? I mean, they'll have the whole planet surrounded. We'll never get away. Oh, yes, we will. Look down the ducting. There's a grill leading to outside the palace. <laughs> we crawled along the tube to the grill, and with all my strength, I kicked it down. <laughs> Meanwhile, back inside, all hell was breaking loose. Droog, you steaming blunderer! Kremen and all the others have escaped! Oh, I'll pay a wages bonus to the torturer who catches them! But tell me, evil one, how can you pay us a wages bonus if you don't pay us any wages in the first place? We get paid nothing. Yes, I, uh, I was forgetting. All right, I'll double the wages you're getting now. Satisfied? Double or nothing. Okay, but it's got to be backdated. Backdated? Out of the question. I will not submit to this financial blackmail droog. <laughs> You ungrateful swines! If you don't like working as torturers, why don't you get other jobs? We've already tried, but our IQs are so low, we could only get work as disc jockeys. <laughs> well, Captain, here we are at the mighty wall surrounding Gort's palace. Hey, guys, look! Why? This piece of wall looks a bit lower than the rest. Perhaps I could do a bionic leap. Oh, it must be so handy being bionic. Well, I'm only half bionic, really, Carla. And being half bionic means that different limbs and organs of mine have different days of birth and therefore different star signs. Oh. For instance, my right leg here is Aries. Yeah. My left arm is Pisces. Uh -huh. My right eye is Leo. Yeah. And my left leg is Virgo. Mm. What do you say to that? I think you're talking a load of Taurus. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, I thought... 
Why am I escaping from this maniac? I foiled his plot. Why don't I try and, and reason with him? We made our way back to his throne room and confronted him. Well, you might have foiled the plan this time, Kremen, but I have other plans to destroy you lot. Oh, yeah? Such as? Well, I could attach a giant magnet to the sun, and then every planet and star would be drawn towards it. And then when they get too close, they'd burst into flames. Oh, come on. That's been done twice this week already. But I paid a fellow good money for that idea. Yeah, it's probably the same guy who sells us the jokes for this show. Did he sell you any other fiendish plans? Yes, a brilliant diabolic scheme. Oh? Listen to this. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I walk up to every single individual on Earth and shout, Look out behind you! And then when they turn round, I give them a good hard kick in the shins. Oh, come now, Gort. You don't think people are stupid enough to fall for that, oldie? Well, they will if I do it when they least expect it. Gort, look out behind you! Gort! Ha! Caught with your own oh. fiendish plan, Gort. Oh, my shins! You bruised my shins! All 18 of them! <laughs> That's the trouble with you evil, diabolic warlords, Gort. You never expect your schemes to be used against you. Okay, Space Patrol Constable Spoontang, read Gort his rights and slip the bracelets on him. Yes, sir, Captain. And when he's got the bracelets on, give him the matching earrings and brooch. <laughs> well, Captain, you may have me captive, but don't forget, my entire palace is crawling with guards. Never mind that, Gort. Just remember, my laser gun is pointing right in your your ear, and if there's any trouble, I'll pull the trigger and blow your brains out. Over in a corner, Doc was trying to figure a way out of the palace with his miniature computer. Yeah, so easy way. Follow me, everybody. We made our way down a few corridors, up a few lift shafts, across a light bridge, and through loads of those sliding doors you see in space movies. Oh my god, look at that! We were standing on a ledge with a yawning drop below. Edge your way along, everybody! Well, Captain, pretty scary, eh? You'll never make it! Shut up, you waste of space! I'm frightened, Captain! Yeah, I daren't look down. What a terrifying drop! Captain, you're looking down my cleavage! Just trying to keep abreast of the script, Carla. Captain, what? Look, a door over here with a sign on it! It says, Spare Rockets! The doc picked the lock with his teeth and burst in. Not bad for a man of 186. Hey, Captain. What? How come he's so old and still alive? Well, on one of his expeditions, he discovered the Fountain of Youth. Really? Hmm. However, he didn't drink the water because he saw what the youth did in it. <laughs> hey, Captain, look over here. What? Here's the rocket that'll get us out of here. How do you know? Well, it's got written on the side, this spaceship is guaranteed for two million miles or six adventures, whichever comes first. It's a bit small, isn't it, Captain? Well, you can squeeze in with Carla. Oh, no, mine, Captain. No? I never associate mit women. Oh. It gets in the way of scientific progress. You mean you've never made love? No, never. Then I must tell you about the bird and the bee. Don't you mean the birds and the bees? No, no, I'll tell you about orgies later. <laughs> okay, everybody, let's get out of here. We blasted off for home with our captive and arrived on Earth to tumultuous applause and a meeting with the President. Kremen, you're late. Sorry, Mr. President. I've been posing for a stamp. Oh, you must be very tired after your adventure, Kremen. Tell me, do you have any trouble falling asleep? Oh, no, sir. I can do it with my eyes shut. <laughs> Good. Well, congratulations, Kremen. Thank you. Put it there. Okay, sir. No, Kremen, I meant your hand. <laughs> Later that evening, over Drinky Poos... Well, Captain, what do you think our next adventure will be? The search for the lost tribe of the Freen Men. Oh, I heard about them. Tell me, how did they get lost? Well, they were playing hide-and-seek, Carla, and they overdid the hiding. Oh, seems to me they're not worth looking for. You're right, and when I find them, I'm going to tell them to get lost. <laughs> what will happen next? Tune in on Monday and find out in Kremen of the Star Corps.